Shazam 2 star teases her new character with cryptic image. Rachel Zegler has tweeted a cryptic image that may or may not hint at her new character in DC Extended Universe's upcoming sequel, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Making her DCU debut in the movie, Zegler's character has had a lot of mystery surrounding her. As little to nothing about her has officially been revealed yet, not even her name. In fact, of all the major characters in the film, including the other newcomers, hers is the one with the most secrecy surrounding her. The first film, 2019's Shazam, was met with generally positive reviews from both audiences and critics alike. As of now, Zegler's character isn't the only thing wrapped in secrecy regarding this film. The plot itself hasn't been unveiled to the public yet either. Returning from the first film are director David F. Sandberg, Asher Angel and Zachary Leva as the titular hero Billy Batson Shazam, as well as Jack Dylan Grazer as his foster brother Freddie Freeman. Joining Zegler as new players in the Shazam 2 are Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu, confirmed to be playing the villainous gods Hespera and Calypso, respectively. In addition, Grace Fulton, who played Billy Batson's older foster sister Mary Bromfield in the first film, is not only also returning here, but she will be playing her adult superhero form this time around as well. Zegger recently took to her Twitter account with a mysterious photo of what looks like her hand with a key wrapped around it. The key has the words pay IT forward engraved on it. Equally ominous is the caption she included with the pic, Rachel Zegger Shazam 2 character revealed. This may be a jab at how some websites and or vloggers sometimes tend to overdo their headlines when it comes to movie news. The West Side Story actress is known for being quite active on her Twitter account. Soon after Fury of the Gods had its release date pushed up to this December, she posted some pictures of herself hanging out with her co-stars. She also teased recently that Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman might just make an appearance in the upcoming Shazam sequel, stating that I'm not going to say much, but filming Snow White wasn't our first meeting. Even before Zegler starred in Steven Spielberg's West Side Story, the actress has been very popular on Twitter. At just 20 years old, her status as America's new sweetheart is starting to settle in. As for Shazam, Fury of the Gods, Zegler's curious photo might be hinting that her character is a key piece in this movie or it might mean nothing at all with Zegler putting her trolling skills to good use to stir up excitement for the upcoming sequel. Doctor Strange 2 synopsis hides multiverse of menaces real villain. A new synopsis for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness reveals the film's true villain. Marvel Studios' next MCU film will bring back Benedict Cumberbatch's sorcerer to the big screen following Spider-Man No Way Home, but this time, it will be in his own adventure. Doctor Strange will deal with the ramifications of his actions in No Way Home as his spell exposes Earth to interdimensional threats. With roughly a month to go before Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness hits theaters, Marvel Studios is ramping up its marketing efforts for the film. Following the release of its official trailer, more information about the project has been released to the public, particularly with regard to the movie's narrative. Various looks at a new MCU hero, America Chavez, Hachito Gomez, have been released and Wanda Maximoff's Scarlet Witch's Elizabeth Olsen role in the narrative has also been teased multiple times. There's also the expected appearance of the MCU's version of the Illuminati. But one thing is unclear, who the villain of the sequel is. As tickets for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness become available in certain international markets, a cinema chain in the Philippines, SM Cinemas, releases a brand new synopsis for the movie. It reveals that the Sam Raimi-directed blockbuster will see Doctor Strange teaming up with his trusted ally, Wong, Benedict Wong, and even Scarlet Witch to defeat the true villain an alternate version of himself. DR 
Stephen Strange casts a forbidden spell that opens the door to the multiverse, including an alternate version of himself, whose threat to humanity is too great for the combined forces of Strange, Wong, and Wanda Maximoff. The marketing for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has revealed at least three more variants of Doctor Strange. But arguably, the most interesting is that Sinister Strange, who seems to be the evil version of the character from Marvel Studios' What If? animated series. How he's able to make his way into the sacred timeline is unknown at this point. But assuming that the synopsis is accurate, chances are that this is the variant of the sorcerer that they need to battle. What's interesting is that the brief doesn't mention anything about America Chavez, who will reportedly play a significant role in the film. As previously revealed, she'll be the one to teach Doctor Strange about the dangers of the multiverse. Curiously, there's also no mention of the Illuminati. There's also the question about Scarlet Witch's real role in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Marketing for the film has clearly pit her against the future MCU Sorcerer Supreme. This gave fans the idea that Wanda will be the villain of the narrative. But based on this new plot outline, it seems like the pair will ultimately get over their differences and team up. Morbius post credits scene creates seven MCU questions and plot holes. The Morbius post credits scene raises huge questions for both Sony's Spider-Man universe and the MCU. Mid and post credits scenes have become a tradition in the superhero genre, inspired by the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sony is essentially attempting to build their own version of the MCU one centered around Spider-Man and the associated characters whose rights they possess. Given that's the case, unsurprisingly Morbius features both a mid-credits scene and a post-credits scene. Morbius' mid-credits scene opens with a shot of the night sky fracturing, a visual effect that's clearly lifted straight from Spider-Man, No Way Home. Michael Keaton's voucher last seen in Spider-Man, Homecoming shimmers into existence in a jail cell. He's been transported from the MCU into Morbius' reality. This is followed by a news bulletin announcing that a man named Adrian Toomes randomly appeared in a prison cell, and an emergency hearing is being held about his release, given there's no reason for him to be in jail in this reality. This is followed by a post-credits scene in which Michael Morbius is approached by Toomes, who's suited up as the Vulture again. Vulture claims not to know how he wound up in this world, but he's convinced it has something to do with Spider-Man. He then offers Morbius the chance to work with him as part of a team, because he believes together they could do some good. Post-credits scenes in shared universes tend to be about setup, and Morbius is certainly no exception. Many viewers will be a little surprised, however, Given the concepts in play in these scenes, the multiverse and even the existence of Spider-Man aren't signposted at all by the main film. As a result, they raise more questions than they do answers and even leave some major character arcs unresolved from Morbius. Morbius faced its protagonist with an unenviable choice. Synthetic blood had kept Morbius' appetite in check, but it was losing its effectiveness. At first a dose of synthetic blood could keep him seated for over 6 hours, but by the end of the movie it only worked for just over 4. Recognizing that soon his hunger for real blood would become insatiable, Morbius prepared two doses of a toxin designed to kill both the human and the bad parts of his DNA. He used one of the doses on Matt Smith's Milo and planned to use the other on himself. The Morbius post-credits scene is set some time later, but it doesn't even hint at the resolution of this dilemma. Why has Morbius chosen not to kill himself? And given this choice, has he been forced to move on to ingesting human blood? The latter seems unlikely, because Vulture suggests it wasn't too hard to reach out to Michael Morbius, implying he's no longer a wanted man. The FBI correctly deduced Milo was responsible for several of the recent murders, so Morbius must have been cleared. 
but he'd surely be in more trouble if he had started to consistently feed on humans. At this stage, it's unclear whether this is a plot hole or simply a detail Sony intend to explain later on, as they continue to build their shared universe. Sony Pictures executives have always dreamed of their own team-up movie featuring ancillary Spider-Man characters, a Sinister Six film, in which their individual protagonists team up to hunt down Spider-Man. Morbius and credits move on from the main film to explicit setup for the Sinister Six, with Michael Keaton's Vulture playing the Nick Fury figure who invites Michael Morbius into the team. It's reasonable to assume Venom will be on board as well, and the upcoming Kraven the Hunter movie puts another key piece in place. Asked about the possibility of the Sinister Six, Morbius director Daniel Espinosa seemed to openly admit this is in the works. It sure looks like a start, he confirmed. Interestingly, this builds on plans Sony has had in place since the early 2010s, when the studio initially tried jump-starting the Sinister Six through the Amazing Spider-Man films. In fact, the Amazing Spider-Man 2's credits seem plainly set up the Sinister Six team. The fundamental problem with the Sinister Six, of course, comes from the fact Vulture really shouldn't be in this reality at all. The energy effect associated with Vultures being transported to this universe is the same as the one seen in Spider-Man No Way Home, which presumably means Vulture is supposed to have jumped dimensions as a result of Doctor Strange's spell in the final act. It's possible the fact Vulture knew Spider-Man's secret identity before Mysterio revealed it to the world LED to the magic misfiring, in some way, leaving him shunted into another timeline. Fantastic Beasts 3 J.K. Rowling may have already spoiled Theseus' story. J.K. Rowling may have spoiled Theseus' commander's Callum Turner story, as he's seen with Newt, Eddie Redmayne, in the Fantastic Beasts. The secrets of Dumbledore trailer matches the Greek legend of Theseus all too well. The first two Fantastic Beasts movies connected J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World storyline in the 1920s with the Harry Potter timeline, mainly through Dumbledore, Jude Law, who is rallying everyone around him in his war against his friend turned for Grindelwald, Mads Mikkelsen. The third Fantastic Beasts installment will see brothers Newt and Theseus working closely together for Dumbledore, in hope of ending Grindelwald's reign of terror. In the Fantastic Beasts 3 trailer, Newt and Theseus are swimming carefully through a maze-like cave full of blast-ended scrutes. Finally, they encounter a mother beast, which can either be a giant blast-ended scrut or a manticore, judging by its enormous scorpion tail. The movie's second trailer shows a prisoner falling to his death, then Newt commenting, we're gonna need some help. The maze, the beast, and the prisoners all match a legend from Greek mythology, Theseus and the Minotaur. J.K. Rowling has been known to choose meaningful names for her characters, from Remus Lupin, where the legendary Romulus and Remus were raised by a wolf and Lupus means wolf in Latin, to Tom Felton's Draco. Malfoy, where Malfoy literally translates as bad faith from French. Theseus' name was certainly not chosen randomly either. The Greek legend states that Theseus offered to go into the Minotaur's deadly maze, defeat the beast, and free the Athenians stuck in the labyrinth. Theseus emerged victorious from the maze, and if Rowling is to stay true to the story, this means that Callum Turner's Theseus might be the one who kills the screwed manticore and saves his brother in the process. However, there's a tragic twist to the story, Great Theseus eventually dies falling off a cliff. The Fantastic Beasts 3 trailer shows a moment where Theseus falls in the cave, with Newt grabbing his hand. But again, if Rowling sticks to the legend, Theseus' fall might be his final one. Fantastic Beasts the crimes of Grindelwald ends with Theseus tragically losing his fiancée, Lita Lestrange, played by the Batman's Catwoman, Zoe Kravitz, as she fights Grindelwald in an effort to save Newt and Theseus. Fantastic Beasts 3 is bound to explore the aftermath of Lita's death for both brothers, 
as Nude had a complicated relationship with her before she met his older brother. It would be a deeply tragic story for Nu to lose his brother so soon after Lita's untimely death, especially after he finally opened up to Theseus and told him he has chosen a side. Theseus Commander is a complex character, and with Lita gone, there are several dimensions to explore. His relationship to Newt, to Dumbledore, and to the Ministry of Magic, to name a few. It would be a shame to end Theseus' character arc and deprive Newt of a brother he has very recently become closer to. Nevertheless, the Fantastic Beasts, the secrets of Dumbledore trailer just proved J.K. Rowling thought of the Greek legend when she named Theseus, and he is bound to meet a tragic end unless the author changed some details to his story. Okay stay tuned to our channel. I'll be providing you with up-to-date reliable movie news. Enjoy!